If you're trying to choose between having fun and being productive, you are asking yourself the wrong question. Productivity is a lot like an adventure. You are the hero. You are moving through the story, leveling up your skills, overcoming hardships, and defeating bad guys. Sometimes the bad guys look like a huge load of laundry, but still bad guys. But to be honest, life isn't always like that. In fact, sometimes we are trying so hard to level up, facing hardships beyond what we can manage, and struggling to defeat bad guys at every level. And when this happens, we are burnt out. This is what happened to me last year. I had so many responsibilities and commitments and I wasn't giving myself a chance to rest and I just started to burn out so hard and I needed something to change. That's when I picked up this book, Feel Good Productivity by Ali Abdal. In it, Ali discusses how creating and experiencing joy can actually make us more productive and one of the ways to create joy for yourself is through play. Play is exactly what it sounds like. You're engaging with something fun and stimulating that feels relaxing and enjoyable to do. It's activating our curiosity and creativity in a fun way. And what this means is that when we experience play, we are actually healing our mental and physical fatigue and thus our burnout and making way for a type of productivity that doesn't come at the cost of our soul. So in this video, we are going to talk about how you can integrate play into your life to create a less stressful productivity experience. Let's get into it. So let's talk about why you should use play. First, play provides psychological relief which is just a fancy way of saying that it makes you feel good. It is relaxing, it is fun, it is without pressure, it literally releases dopamine in the brain. That relief can also help heal us from the burnout we're feeling, like I mentioned earlier, and it can help us do something really important, which is overcome fear. So up in this corner, we have all the reasons that play is important to us from like a psychological standpoint. Also, being able to play makes us more invested in the outcomes of what we are doing. I also just wrote and process there because really what play is doing is it's making us more invested in both the outcomes of what we are accomplishing, but also we are having fun in the process. And this is because when we are interested in stuff, we are following what's interesting. We are having fun. So more of that having fun process kind of thing, being interested. We also get some nice, good, natural motivation that comes with sort of tinkering and toying with stuff. So play is helping us achieve a sense of psychological relief. We're having fun. We're feeling relaxed. We're not afraid. And it also makes us more invested in the whole process because we are literally naturally engaging our curiosity with stuff that we are actually interested in. Play is also extremely important for a lot of areas of life. So it adds, so it just generally boosts life experiences because when you're relaxed and you're engaging in curiosity you're much more chill in all areas of life so two areas in particular that i really think are impacted by play in terms of a productivity standpoint are your career and work lots of jobs will ask you you know how flexible you are how you can think on your feet how engaged you are in your work and these are really questions about play can you be engaged sincere professional and also experiment and have that curiosity and then also really relationships as well. I'm not going to go too much into relationships in this video, but if you're curious about how play can impact relationships, I recommend you check out stuff from the Gottman Institute. They talk a bit about play over there and how being playful with your partner can really impact the strength of your relationship. So two really important areas. It definitely has a lot to do with productivity, which is what we're talking about today. Now I want to zero in on a few elements of this flowchart that I've just created for you here, which is namely how you You can employ play to find the fun in your everyday tasks, how you can practice embracing your curiosity, and how you can start to overcome the fear that stands in the way of you being truly playful, truly experimental, truly go with the flow. Let's get into it. One habit I try to make more pleasurable is my daily nutrition, and I have been killing it on that front thanks to AG1. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. I was so tired of taking a bunch of different vitamins for all my different various needs, but I was so thrilled to find one supplement that covered my nutritional basis. It's crazy how much AG1 actually packs into one drink. They have prebiotics and probiotics for gut health, magnesium and vitamin B for energy, vitamin C 
and zinc for immune defense. Choking down a bunch of vitamins used to be my least favorite part of my morning routine, but AG1 is actually something I really look forward to. The taste is sort of hard to explain. It's like planty, but also pineapple. So like healthy, planty, pineapple-ish. You generally mix it with water, but I actually really like to mix mine with orange juice. Makes me feel like I'm making myself a little morning cocktail. So there's a life hack for you. Supporting your health is especially complicated in the colder months. Even here in LA, it's cold, okay? It's raining, pity me. Everyone gets sick this time of year, so you definitely need a little bit of extra digestive and immune system support. So if any of this sounds up your alley, go to my link at drinkag1.com slash Rachel in theory, or click the QR code right next to my head to get your free welcome kit, which includes a canister, a shaker, a year supply of vitamin D3 K2, plus five extra travel packs. Thanks again to AG1 for sponsoring this video and for making my morning habits a little more fun. Okay, let's get back to the video. So first we're talking about fun. One of the most important mindset shifts that we can make to change our everyday, like laundry or taxes into a fun task, is to ask ourselves, what would this look like if it were fun? For a long time, what fun looked like to me was this. I used to decorate my planners with stickers that were cute and friendly and fun. It gave me a hit of dopamine every time I came in here and added a sticker, even if it was just to mark down it was raining or if it was to mark down something something that I did, like doing chores. I found putting stickers in my planners to be very creative experience, and it was fun and pleasurable to look back at afterwards, which means I always wanted to be in my planner putting down stickers. So this made planning and productivity very fun for me to do because it was just a creative exercise that I got to add on to my regular productivity routine. However, I think it's important to recognize that what is fun once won't be fun always. So keep asking yourself this question of what would this look like if it were fun so that the fun doesn't get stale. For example, I am not really using stickers in my planner anymore, but the main way I'm having fun doing productivity is by tracking all my habits in Habitica, which is a productivity and habit app skinned to look like an RPG. I have a little character and by checking off the habits and tasks I need to do, I'm able to level up that character and earn rewards like fun costumes or pets. Because this is a game, it's so fun for me to win at the game and how you win at the game is essentially by winning at your habits. So it's literally, it just makes it so fun to complete my dailies and the things that I want to do each day. So ask yourself, what would this look like if it were fun? And when you get down to granular habits, what would this look like if it were fun? Sometimes that's just putting on music while you do the laundry or getting yourself a coffee while you walk around the grocery store and have to do your grocery shopping. It can be really small, it can be really big, but keep asking yourself this question because it is pretty important to continually check in with and make sure you're having fun. Another important way we can start to experience more play in our everyday lives is by embracing our curiosity. I think in a highly oversaturated world, it can be really hard to know what actually spikes our own curiosity compared to just what is showing up on our social media feeds, but research has shown that when we are feeding our curiosity, the things we are naturally curious about, and doing something that is in alignment with something we're naturally curious about, we get a hit of dopamine. In other words, we start to have fun. And that sense of fun enabled by curiosity improves all sorts of things that help productivity, such as focus and memory. So trying to embrace your curiosity is pretty important in terms of making sure you are having fun and experiencing that sense of play. One way I embrace my curiosity, especially for tasks that I don't want to do, is by telling myself that I am just going to work on the part that I'm interested in. So for example, if I am writing a script for YouTube and I feel like I'm procrastinating a lot on the script and for whatever reason it just seems too hard for me to do, I will often just skip to the part of the script that I actually find interesting and I will start there. Chances are my curiosity about one particular productivity subject that is nestled within a larger script will lead me to being curious to what the rest of the script entails and I'll be able to research those things and write about those things with much more interest because my curiosity is already naturally leading me there. So you can start with what you're curious about and it will often lead you to being more productive in the long run. Lastly, we want to reframe 
failure. In my personal life, I play a lot of video games, and I used to hate playing video games that were combat-based because I would die a lot. And I hated dying because it felt like I failed a level or failed at the game objectives. But when I observed my partner playing the same games that I struggled with, he would often fail at a level and then just restart it. And the thing is, when he restarted the level, he fully expected that he would fail it again. But he was trying again, not necessarily to succeed, but to learn more about the level so that eventually he could beat it. So we started to do this thing where we reframe everything we do that we are afraid of failing, everything that seems too hard or too tough, instead of as this big scary task, we reframed it as a fact-finding mission. And a fact-finding mission is something that you are doing just to gather information. You're going out on a particular level in a video game just to see what happens if you push X instead of Y. Or you're going to a new grocery store and trying something new just to see if the produce is more or less expensive. Labeling things as fact-finding missions neutralizes the threat of failure by acknowledging that no matter what happens, failing or succeeding, we will still have learned something, we will still have found some facts. In the book, Ali Abdal calls this reframing a failure gathering data points. If you start thinking about failure less like a threatening, looming possibility that means you must be perfect at all costs to avoid it, and instead start thinking about places where you may potentially fail as I'm just gathering data about what works for me, or I'm just going on a fact-finding mission, you might find it much easier to experiment and play along the way to your destination. If you want to know more about play or integrating joy into your productivity routine, I will leave Ali Abdal's book linked in the description box below, or you can click on this video right here next to my head about how planning can contribute to your self-care. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.